So with that, Mr. <laughs> Bill Cummings. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. First lesson of the day, when you go to a Sunday baseball game at the Round Rock Express, you are to wear sunscreen, which I did not. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Chef, and thank you everyone for packing the room today. I'm really excited about presenting uh, today on Facebook and Instagram strategies, mainly Facebook uh, for this particular instance. Uh, I've uh, started No Time for Social back in 2012. However, I've been running Facebook ad campaigns since 2008. In fact, uh, I founded a prior company here in, in the Austin area back in 1995, and in 2008, we were uh, successful at running about $50,000 worth of ads on Facebook for that company. So <clears throat> I fell into this. Um, I left my prior company, went back into the corporate world, and had some of my prior clients ask me over and over again, can you help me with Facebook? Can you help me with Facebook? And I kind of just fell into it. So. Uh, I've kind of been an entrepreneur my whole life and knew that corporate America was kind of a segue into whatever that next business venture would be, which it ended up being No Time for Social, uh, which is a 2 a.m. in the morning GoDaddy registration. If For those of you who are obsessed with domain names, uh, it was just kind of a thought one night and um, I had several others register, like my Facebook manager and several other weird ones. But, Fell into no time for social, and uh, it's it's stuck with us, and, and we're building on it uh, today. We are located in Round Rock, uh, sort of behind Pokey Joe's Gaddyland area. There's a office condominium complex back there on Chisholm Trail, and we have two offices within that that condo set. Uh, we have ten employees. Uh, we manage social media for businesses locally and nationally. So it could be anything from a credit union to a retail business to restaurants, uh, small businesses, and even large businesses. One of our bigger clients in the Austin area is Five Star ER. So if you've ever seen any ads from Five Star ER, usually those ads or any of that content coming out at least for the last two years has come out from my company. A little bit of information about uh, No Time for Social. We are a digital marketer certified partner, which is an organization based out of Austin. Uh, digital marketer is a basically a training platform for companies that want to enhance their level of education within digital marketing, all digital marketing. So while we do focus on social media, we also dabble a little bit in several other areas such as website development, uh, email marketing, funnels, that whole kind of digital marketing process. So let's jump right into it. Uh, since 2016, and, and these, even these numbers have changed, these slides are about a couple months old, uh, the new seed algorithm has changed 14 times on Facebook, business page layout changed three times, in fact that's probably up to four, new business page features six, new ads and targeting options 10 plus and growing. The Facebook ad platform continues to evolve, evolve on a sometimes a daily basis. In fact, the ads platform itself, the business manager platform just changed the other day. I was on the phone with a, a gentleman up in Minnesota that was in panic mode because he's trying to help out other companies using Facebook. He realized he needed to use business manager to do that. He's trying to form an agency. He's locked down to only being able to create five Facebook ad accounts for his clients and doesn't know what to do because he's reached his five and he can't pick up the phone and call Facebook and say, hey, I need more. So uh, we continue to see the platform evolve, continue to see it grow on a daily basis. Uh, obviously, we've recently seen a bunch of chaos with all the data. We haven't really seen an impact on our customers, the customers we're trying to target, uh, or the number of people that we've been trying to target on Facebook. Now, obviously, Facebook releases that data, so we'll see if we see a decrease in the total number of individuals in the U.S. that are, uh, we, you know, that are on Facebook that have active accounts in, during their next quarterly earnings, because that data is important to everybody, including advertisers like No Time for Social and the companies that we work with. So. Our goal today is really to optimize your page for success in 2018. We'll talk about um, claiming your custom URL, we'll talk about page verification, about us, custom tabs, call to action. Those first five we're gonna go through pretty quickly. 
Uh, and then six through 10, I want to dive deep into because really the ads platform is something that should be top of mind for every small business that exists today, uh, especially from a digital marketing standpoint. The ability to create, build, and understand custom audiences, build on these custom audiences, build on people that are visiting your, your website is really, really an important piece of the Facebook advertising and digital platform today. So that's something we're really gonna dig into deep and I'll be able to, uh, I would jot down questions as we're going through. Try to take those at the end unless you've got something really pressing. Custom URL is just like your website. The custom URL is a web address that people are gonna use to find your Facebook page. So when you go and create a Facebook page, they're gonna create a page for you with their own version of a URL. What does that look like? It looks like an unclaimed URL, which is right at the bottom here. So facebook.com slash page slash UASRC, this is one of our clients, with a bunch of numbers. So what that does is it removes the string of numbers after the page, makes your page look professional and branded, uh, allows you to easily communicate with people versus giving them a long number and string of numbers. So if you have not claimed your custom URL, that's something that you should go out and, and take care of right away if you can. Now, getting a custom URL for a, I'm not gonna say generic name, but a name that sounds familiar to any other company could be difficult. So that's something you may have to do a little research on is determine whether or not that custom URL is taken already. So to claim the custom URL, you're gonna to go to the about section of your page, page info, and enter that information into username. So there'll be a section there where you can edit your page information, go in, select that desired name. You're gonna to want to, um, you're gonna to wanna to understand what that name is before you go in and claim it. You can't go in and change your, your page name multiple times. So do your research beforehand. Try to figure out if the name has already been used. If it's not, have kind of maybe the top three or four that you want to enter in to claim your custom URL. So that's one thing to kind of kick start, start <coughs> your uh, optimizing your page uh, going forward. Page verification. So by verifying your, verifying your page, you're gonna prove to Facebook that your business is legitimate and authentic. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means you're gonna get, if you've ever been to a page and you see a gray check mark, gray check mark is for business, blue check mark is for celebrities and other individuals, but a check mark means that Facebook has verified whether it be a, a phone call or information that you provided them that matches up with your page, i.e. address, with a phone bill or address with a electric bill, a utility bill. That information is gonna be used for Facebook to understand that you're the authentic page. There's a lot of companies out there that their pages, I'm not gonna say they get hacked, but they kinda of get duplicated and then you've got multiple pages showing up. So from a search standpoint, you want your page, if somebody's searching for your page, to show up at top, and this, this page verification process is going to help that happen. Verifying your page is located under settings, so under the general section of your settings tab, which is at the top here. My, my pointer doesn't show up on the TV, but under settings, general and page verifications, you would click edit and that would allow you to go in and enter that information. If your phone number can ring right back to you, meaning it's not an 800 number with a phone tree, it would be best to put your phone number in, They'll, they're gonna call you with a four digit code and you enter that four digit code right away. So that page verification can happen right away unless you need to use a utility bill or some other bill. Then you, you'll, they'll give you the option to upload it right then and there, submit that information, and they'll go through the page verification process. They'll let you know if there's any issues with it. That's the second thing you can do to kind of increase your, your visibility and, and that verification on Facebook. Sorry, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so they used to tell me that uh, to verify the page, you would have to have listed your phone number in a public listing. So it, it, it's not only by putting in your number and then getting a code back. Have you heard something about that? Um, 
Meaning it's not listed anywhere else? Yeah, if it's not listed anywhere else. I could see that maybe being a, a ticking point for them as far as we're unable to verify that number anywhere else, therefore we're, we're not going to be able to verify it using the phone number, send in a business document that verifies the address, and then we'll have to use that additional step. Do you show the verify through phone, in your case, or through uh, when, when we onboard a new customer that we're working with, we normally request that documentation yeah. up front as we're onboarding them, and then we'll go through the process instead of having our client do it. it it's just easier than saying, hey, get ready for this call coming in, or there's any issues. So um, I would say 90% of the time we're using the paid verification with the documentation. Okay, thank you. Sure. About us section, categories, subcategories, and, and custom tabs, three and four we're gonna go through pretty quick. I mean, this is um, simple information that needs to be updated. About us is important because you want people to know and understand anything and everything about your business. A lot of this is a copy and paste from your website, copy and paste from any business documents that you're pushing out. It's, it's really going to just depend on your business, what types of things that you're focused on. Uh, all of that information can be edited within the About Us section. So you just wanna go into that page information section and you wanna build that out with the information that Facebook is requesting. And again, most of this stuff can come from your About Us section on your website. You may have to pare it down depending on how much text is available within Facebook, but I can tell you there's a lot of pages I come across of businesses that they just, it's something that they just pass up. They bypass it, they're not thinking about it. It is important to have that information in there, especially if people hit your site and they click on that About Us section. If it's completely blank, you're basically missing out on the same thing that people would click on if they go to your website and click About Us and if it was blank. So just kind of an important piece of information to have in there and we just wanna highlight that as something that should be updated. Custom tabs is a way um, that Facebook can allow your company to look more, pro more professional and branded. It's basically a layout process for your business. So I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but within your settings on your page, there is the ability to pick a custom tab process based on the type of business. Most people are gonna pick like a professional services, but there are others for retail, appointment setting, um, just something that we like to point out that again, sometimes appears to be a missing piece of information that companies do not focus on. So you can, um, best practices is just choose the layout within the, the settings that best fit your business uh, and rearrange and turn off unused tabs. So you'll have a list of tabs. Okay, is this, is this from one of these pre-named? Yes. Okay, so you can't pick the custom name for each tab? No, no, they're, they're the pre-named tabs. And you can turn those, you can toggle those on and off based on, on what need. And then this is what shows up on the left-hand side when you go into a Facebook page. The best, the best way to view this on a business page would be to go in through a desktop versus mobile. So if you're on a desktop and you bring up a Facebook page, you'll see, in fact, let's see, yeah. So right here. So this is what the custom tabs would look like. And that information is customizable through the, the settings. There's a lot of information in here within settings, more than what we could talk about in a day. We could go through each one of those, but I wanna get to the ad section, which is really kind of the, the most important piece. Call to action button, uh, that's another important piece. So within the custom tabs, you're gonna have the ability to set up your call to action button, which is the button at the top of your page under your cover photo. And there's several different ways for people to set this up or to contact you. So you could have the call now button, where if somebody clicks on that, they're gonna be able to call the phone number that's on there. Contact us is gonna allow you to set their, send their information in, email, phone number, name. Send a message, you may see that as a, as a, a lot of people are using send message now. So if you go to, a, I don't know, even like amazon.com, Facebook, or one of the others, there a lot of them are using send message because messenger is a very popular way to communicate now within Facebook. Um, sign up, send email, just a couple other ways for that to happen. 
so pick the call to action button that is going to be most appropriate for your business. I would say the, the, the most important ones or the most the ones that are used most prevalent are call now, contact us, and send message. All right, so let's jump into the real, what I would call meat and potatoes of what we want to talk about today, which is the ads platform. Um, as a business owner, uh, it's really, really important to understand and know what you're doing within the Facebook ads platform, especially if you're going to be spending money on digital marketing. Um, because I'm in digital marketing, I don't want to downplay print advertising or postcards or any other way that people market, but dollar for dollar, your ability to reach people dollar for dollar right now on digital marketing and using Facebook ads, using Instagram ads, is the best return, if it's done right. So if you send out 5,000 postcards, you know 5,000 postcards are gonna be delivered to the people that you're selecting, right? You don't, you don't necessarily know unless you have specific tracking in place, i.e. a separate phone number to contact you on those postcards, a separate URL for people to access through those postcards. If you're a restaurant, a specific coupon that bring, people bring in based off of those postcards. That's really the way that you would track a postcard. If you're trying to reach 5,000 people on Facebook, you can do that. Most people, in fact, if you've ever done a boost post, raise your hand. Okay, so boost post is, is usually the way that Facebook, I would say, uh, reels you into that advertising addiction on Facebook, right? The, if you manage a page and you're going through your own personal feed, one of your own posts will show up in your feed and say, hey, you've got a high performing post. Click boost now and you'll reach 5,000 people and it costs you $50 or whatever that may be. You click it, you run an ad for a week and then you wonder what happened, right? Uh, you may have a high performing post. It doesn't mean that that post had some kind of call to action in it for somebody to take an action. It doesn't mean that that post was appropriate for the audience that you selected if you decided to select an audience at all. So those are the things that I want to talk about today with the ads platform, the custom audiences, and really diving down into some of the ads that we run. So most businesses use boost posts to advertise. Facebook's not worth I don't know what they're at now, but let's just call it $500 billion because people are not clicking on boost posts. It happens. I would say boosts are probably the top of the iceberg and diving into ads platform and really digging down deep into that ads platform is everything else under the water, right? And we've seen this kind of thing used in sales and all kinds of different business venues throughout the year. but. I like to say boost posts, top of the iceberg, you're kind of quick, you're getting in. Ads and ads platform, you're really digging down deep and beginning to put effort behind tracking, building, and managing everything going on within that ads platform. So best practices is run all your ads through the Facebook ads platform, but you've got to understand it. Track all of these ads using the Facebook ads reporting, which again, I'm gonna say might be another nightmare for people. If you go in and you ran all the ad reporting for just one ad, there might be 400 different fields that could be exported. Uh, information on interest, how much the ad interacted with, click-through rates, there's hundreds of different things that you can look at. So that, you're gonna to need to figure out what you wanna look at from a reporting standpoint. Um, use the retargeting options that are not available with Boots. So the boost post is great. They give you some targeting. You can narrow in some audiences. You can zoom down 10 miles into an area. You can run these ads using some interest, maybe male, female. Uh, but the, the, the retargeting is not available within the boost post option. So we're gonna dig really deep down into some of that today. And your custom audiences are really the key to long-term success. You guys know your customers. If you're able to put out content and use Facebook ads to target that specific customer using these retargeting options, using these, these custom audiences, you're going to be much more successful over a long period of time 
than in the short period of time of running a boost post. So these are some of the important best practices that we use at No Time for Social to manage our clients' Facebook ads. Facebook custom audiences. This is really where the, the power exists for running effective and, and powerful Facebook ad campaigns. Um, it's going to allow you to maximize your ad dollar budget over a long period of time and target your potential customers. So there's several different ways to begin to craft custom audiences. Uh, you can reach loyal customers, people that you're already doing business with. You can, vi you can target site visitors, so people that visit your website can be retargeted on Facebook. Uh, if you've ever gone to, for me it's, you know, if I go to Home Depot and I look up an air conditioning filter and I go to Facebook and 30 seconds later that air conditioning filter is showing up into my Facebook feed, that's, that would be the far extreme of Home Depot using the Facebook API process where they probably have 50 programmers in a room, Home Depot that is, that are able to immediately push an ad to my Facebook feed as Bill Combs right after I visit their website. That, that is the extreme of that sophistication that could happen. Because they know I viewed it, they probably know I didn't put it in the cart, and they want to continue to push that advertisement out to me. It's funny that well, I don't know if you saw the Zuckerberg testimony, but you know the senators that are you know 80, 90 years old and have no <laughs> idea what's going on in life, you know, and and they they don't realize that TV stations make money off advertising, radio stations make money off advertising, pretty much anybody doing anything in the world of advertising and marketing, there's a way that they're using their platform. And one of the questions that they asked them was, you know, well, how does your site make money? And you know, it was just a simple question. We sell advertising. So it was just funny that you know some of the, 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 the testimony that I go through had to talk about the simplest things going on with the Facebook ads platform. Uh, and companies that are using it and using it to the level of that sophistication are getting the ROI out of it. Uh, mobile users, we don't necessarily do a lot of work with mobile right now, but you can target people that are, are using your mobile app. Uh, it's not an area that we really have dived into too much uh, as we don't have that love, that type of customer, but that is another way that to target people using Facebook custom audiences. So what are the types of audiences that you can set up using Facebook custom audiences? There's, there's several different ways. Um, one of them is a customer file. So when we begin working with a customer, one of the things we initially ask them is, what is your, what, do you have a customer list? Are you sending out emails to your customers right now? Do you have information on your customers that we can utilize? This is dabbling into that area that obviously has become a, a point of contention is, can a company use their own data on customers to retarget customers? The answer is yes. Um, the question is, who's accessing that data after you upload it? So if we look at the first one, the customer file, and I think, let me just double check. Yeah, we're gonna get into that next, but customer file is one way. So that is, that is where you're uploading your own customer file information into Facebook, and Facebook is saying, you've uploaded 5,000 people, I have a match on 4,000 of them. You now have a custom audience that you can run an ad and target your customers with an ad. So think about the power of that. If I am a restaurant and I'm collecting phone number and email information, or I've got an email list that people are signing up to, and I want to retarget those customers with a special going on Friday night, I can run an ad to that 4,000 people Friday from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. in the afternoon with a $50 budget to claim the offer only to that customer list. Now, those customers could see the ad and share it with their friends, that would be cool. You're getting extra customers to come in, but that's a way that you can utilize customer file. Website traffic. I'm sure everybody in here running a small business has a website. So you can add a Facebook pixel, which is a piece of code similar to Google Analytics. If any of you use Google Analytics to track visitors, Facebook can also track visitors. The Home Depot example I mentioned earlier, 
is exactly what that is. You add a piece of code to your website. When people go on your website, Facebook adds them into an audience. They build that audience over time. You can run an ad just to website visitors. In fact, you can run an ad just to website visitors that hit a specific page. For example, Bill Combs went out to Home Depot, looked at those air, air conditioning filters, and now I've got an ad for air conditioning filters. So if you have that segmented out and you've got specific audiences you're trying to reach, you can run an ad for people that just hit that URL. App activity, we don't really mess with, but there is a way for people to target people that are visiting with your, that are interacting with your app. Offline activity, we haven't really dabbled in much, but there is a way to target people that are visiting your store, uh, interacting with you by phone. There's really some sophisticated things out there, and, and even we haven't dove into them yet. Um, engagement is another one, and I think we dive down into that in a moment, um, but there's a whole other subset on engagement that we'll look at. And that's really from micro audience targeting, and, and we'll look at that here in a second, and I'll give you some examples of that. So that's one area of custom audiences. We're gonna talk about several others. So I know it's a lot, but this is, this is what Facebook has presented us and the different ways that we can target people. So custom audiences. This is the customer file area where you would upload a custom audience. If you have first name, last name, phone number, zip code, date of birth, year of birth, um, all kinds of information. There's, there's 15 different things that you can upload. You can add that as a text file, upload it, and you're gonna create a custom audience to target. We run some political campaigns at No Time for Social for people that are running for office in this, in Williamson County. We have taken <laughs> voter information and uploaded that in order to target voters. Uh, we've taken lists for, uh, anybody familiar with uh, a cool place if you have kids called Dart em Up? Mm -hmm. They're an indoor dart gun arena. Okay, so Dart em Up, we started managing Dart em Up's Facebook page before they even opened. So we run a massive amount of advertising for them. We've got their customer file. We're able to upload that, run ads to their customers. So that's kind of a, an interesting example of how we use this right now. So that is a way for you to upload a list and have Facebook match up your customers on Facebook with the people that you're currently doing business with. And you can add to the list at a later date. So if you wanted to upload that monthly and just add to that list, you'll have your, you can call it, you know, no time for social, customer list, have that as an audience. Once you upload that information in the custom audience section of your Facebook account, you'll have that, that audience listed. So it's a, it's a phenomenal tool, it really is. Website traffic. So this is the second one that we looked at. This is a place that you can create a custom audience and the website visitors can be the past 30 days up to the past uh, 180 days. So in this case, you're gonna, you're gonna add the, the Facebook pixel code to your website. Whether you manage your own WordPress site, there's ways that you can upload that pixel to your website. And then you can pull that customer and create a custom audience based on people that have visited your website. So now you've got an audience set up for people that you're doing business with. Now you have an audience set up with people that are visiting your website. So now you've got two custom audiences that you can run ads to. And this is the level of sophistication that if you do it right and you build on this over time, you're gonna be successful. Quick question. Yes. You said specific web pages, so can you create multiple pixels for like different services or different? You would use the same pixel but within this particular area, I have it blacked out, but uh, it would include people that meet, and then you would put this drop down would be specific URL, and then here you would have another drop down, and you would enter that URL. Okay. So now you're target, and you would name it whatever that URL so you is. Have multiple audiences. So you can have multiple audiences based on specific URLs, yes. So that whole, you could spend <laughs> weeks in there just building that out over time. The Facebook pixel needs to be on that URL's page though. Okay. So, and But it is the same pixel. So your ad account gets one pixel and that pixel is used in multiple areas of your website. So here's the engagement piece. So I'm gonna go back real quick just to show you. So we, had, we have customer file and we have website traffic. We'll skip these two and go to engagement. 
So now we've got those two audiences set up. We're gonna pop over to engagement, and now we've got a whole other list of things that we can look at. Video. So we use video engagement pretty often. Um, depending on the type of ad you run, you can run ads on Facebook that are only up to 15 second video clips. In fact, we're doing that now for a political campaign in Williamson County. We've got video clips set up for Round Rock Hutto, Taylor, uh, Granger, all the small towns of Williamson County. We're running 15 second video ads using the Facebook ads platform but those run out on all the different sites. So if you've ever been to like ESPN and you watch a video and all of a sudden there's a, a break in between of a 15 second ad, those are either Google ads or they're Facebook ads. So we're running those ads through the Facebook ads platform. So the cool thing is you can run a video ad for eight minutes. It's just not gonna run on those particular platforms. So let's, let's say you had a, a, a video that you did for eight minutes, right? Let's say we, we stream this live today and we ended at eight minutes and that video was added to our No Time for Social page, I can run an ad promoting the live video, then I can create a custom audience of people that have viewed that video all the way to 50%, 70%, 95%, 100%. So now I have, let's say I spent a, a grand promoting it and I had 10,000 people that viewed it and 2,000 people watch the full eight minutes all the way to the end, I can now create another audience of those 2,000 people and run another ad. And that ad may say something along the lines of, thank you for watching our eight minute video, schedule a free consultation and we'll do a quick 30 minute audit on your Facebook page. We know that they've already engaged watching that video for a period of time they spent eight minutes, there must be some kind of interest there. So that's a way to, to utilize video and to be able to set up these compartmentalized audiences based off of people that have viewed videos that you've produced. We have a Facebook partner manager. We're, we're lucky enough to be a large enough agency now that we have a Facebook partner manager and he goes in every month and he basically looks at all of our ad accounts for all of our clients cuts and slices them nine ways from Sunday, comes back with statistics, and then also provides us the trending data on what's happening. And he said by 2020, 80% of all ads on Facebook will probably be some form of video ad. It doesn't need it mean it needs to be a person speaking or a video, but it'll be a video ad, meaning you could set up a you know some kind of slideshow video, but that is where things are trending. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about your business and what you may want to do with Facebook going forward. Lead forms. We're going to look at an example of a lead form that the 10,000 to 800,000 in business, we'll look at that actual ad coming up. But there is a way to generate leads using Facebook, using a lead form. So if I put an ad out there saying free consultation, click learn more, they click learn more, your information will pop up on Facebook and you can submit it to that company. Uh, and we'll look at that momentarily. But there's a way to target or retarget people that they click on that ad and the lead form comes up and they get like, you know, cold feet and they're like, I don't want to do this. And they click off of it. Facebook is tracking everything. So I can retarget people with another ad of people that did not submit the lead. Um, full screen experience we haven't messed with because we don't really run canvas ads but it's just another way that Facebook runs ads a lot of the car companies now are doing these canvas ads where you click on the ad and it's got a whole full screen they're talking about the car and you can kind of page through there's ways to retarget people based on that you can target people based on your Facebook page so people that visit your Facebook page and they've done nothing with your company you can set up an audience to retarget that group of people. Um, you, can fit, you can target people based on people that have interacted with your Instagram business profile. So that is another way to create another audience if your company has a Facebook, I mean an Instagram profile. And then events. So if, you, if you're promoting an event, you can have people interact with that event and if they're interacting, you can create a subset. Some of these, from a scaling standpoint, may be tough because if you have a small event 
and you only have a couple people that interact, it's probably not worth it to go in and create a retargeting audience based on that event. But people that are watching videos, absolutely. People that are interacting with your Facebook page, absolutely. Those are the areas that I would probably focus on. Yes. With events, if you do multiple events, does that list accumulate and build up over time, or is it just for that it, one event? It only? would be based on that one event. Yep. So you would have to do it based off of each event. So that's another avenue. So we have we have three avenues now that we looked at for custom audiences, and engagement is is a really important piece that we use within our organization. So now the fourth one. These are people that you've never spoken to before, right? You you have no idea who they are. Um, you just want to target your ideal audience, right? So we'll use Dartum up as an example. I want to target parents that have children the ages of 6 to 12, 5 miles around Dartum up, up near 183. So I can go in and I can pick the demographics, I can pick the location, I can pick interests, I can pick behaviors. Now I'm creating a whole brand new audience that are out so that potentially could have some overflow, right? I mean, it's potentially if I upload my list of 4,000 customers from Dartum up, and I have my customer list, that if I create my demographic list, I can also retarget those people based on the demographics, and some of those people are probably in this saved audience. So this is this is an example of a way that you can go out and you can create an audience based off of people you've never interacted with. So when you go into this section within Facebook under saved audiences, as soon as you bring up this page, it's gonna look like this. Your potential reach out of the gate is gonna target the United States. It's gonna show 230 million people. So that's the list of people. In fact, it would be more if we dropped the age down to 14, but we usually don't run ads targeting kids. Sometimes we do for, for Dartum up, but normally it's going after the parents. So in this case, we're gonna name our audience we're gonna we're gonna pick our area. So if I typed in T Works, right, it would it would bring in the location and I it would zoom down into T Works. Now the cool thing, let me no, I want to all talk about it all here. The cool thing about the custom audiences versus the boost posts. So there were a couple of people that clicked on boost posts before or raised their hand about boost mm -hmm. posts. When you do a boost post, the, the area that you can target is narrowed down to 10 miles. So when you do a boost post, they'll allow you to narrow it to 10 miles. When you create a custom audience, there is an area here. If I clicked in this box right here, it would say drop pin. I can drop a pin on T-Works. I can target people one mile around T-Works. So for a restaurant, instead of a restaurant on the east side of 35 targeting 10 miles around their location, if a restaurant in Hutto just wanted to target people in Hutto or a mile around that restaurant, they can drop a pin, target that one particular area. You can zoom all the way down into a location, drop that pin, and select one mile. So you can run micro ads targeting one mile around to all the audiences we've talked about. So it gets really, really complex. Um, and it, it becomes kind of an entire process that needs to be built out over time. But that's the cool thing about custom audiences, is the ability to narrow in and target down to one mile. Age, gender, languages, detail targeting. Under detail targeting, there's thousands of different ways that you can target. The detail targeting area is one of the points of contention when we when the, the whole Congress thing came up, of uh, being able to target people based on specific things. So you used to, two years ago, be able to target people based on race, which was crazy. They've pulled that out. Um, I, they may be pulling out within the next three to four months the ability to target people based on whether they're single, married, engaged, which is interesting because there are we have had uh, we have had a client that was a juror that was targeting people that were single or that were engaged to try to get wedding bands sold. So we'll we'll see how that plays out. Um, I believe that there'll be other ways. In fact, our partner manager said that there'll be ways that you can kind of get around that. And it's not to be malicious, but from a targeting standpoint, we would like to be able to target those types of people. Um, 
We have an immigration attorney in Austin that we work with, and we target based on language. So we target people that speak Spanish, uh, 25 miles around her location in Austin, and we're very, very successful with that campaign, very successful. Um, in fact, we have, I mentioned, having a tracking number on a postcard. We have, tracking, we have three tracking numbers set up for her. One is off of her main Facebook page. It's a completely separate phone number. The other one is based on, she does a live video every Friday. We have a specific tracking number just for her live videos. And then we run lead ads for her to get leads in. And we have a specific phone number for those. And I track all of that information within our system. We use a product called Twilio, and it's not the easiest thing to use, but it works for us. And I can look at all the calls coming in to her law firm based on each one of those areas of people calling. And that's the only places that those three numbers are located. So this is really the fourth way that you can build an audience to target potential customers. I know that's a lot. It's, <laughs> I could spend eight hours up here going through the real detail piece of it. Uh, but we're gonna jump into Facebook ads now and the types of ads that we run, types of ads that you potentially could run. So when you get out of boost posts and you go into the ads manager, this is what you're going to see. Awareness ads, consideration ads, and conversion ads. We live in the consideration part of, of social media, I would say 80% of the time. 15% of the time we're in the awareness area, at least based on the clients that we work with, and about 5% are in conversion catalog sales and store visits, mainly because most of the clients we work with are, are not in that, in that area, meaning they're, we're not managing stores, we're not managing catalog sales for companies. That would be more like Amazon.com or Home Depot. But you can see there's many different ways to run ads. So now that you've got your audience set, set up, what do you want to run an ad for? Do you want to run it for traffic to your website? Do you want to run it for engagement? Uh, we'll look at engagement here in a second. Do you want to run it for video views? Do you want to run it for lead generation? Do you want people to message your page? Do you just want that brand awareness, meaning you want as many people to see your ad as possible? Do you want to run, do you want to run it for reach, meaning the the most people that could see your ad in a particular time frame. So there's various ways that you can run these types of ads. Under engagement, it goes even deeper. A lot of people like to get page likes. It's funny, whenever I go visit a new client, they're like, how many new page likes are you gonna get me? <laughs> and I like to say what my business partner manager at Facebook says is, you know, likes don't pay the bills, right? So you need to have a full-on strategy. The likes are great, but you can run a like campaign to have ads run on Facebook to get people to like your page. And you may see as you're scrolling through your Facebook uh, account, um, you know, somebody so-and-so likes this page, should suggested page to like, and it gives you a little thumbs up and you click it. That's a like campaign. That's the, that is the, the way to run a like campaign without buying <coughs> likes. So there's ways that you can go out on Fiverr and get 5,000 people from Indonesia to, to like your page right away. Really, really bad idea. Um, we've, had to, we've had to dig companies out of that hole when they've done it and we go in and analyze their page and we're like, what are all these likes? Oh, we had some other company managing our social media and they said they would get us a lot of likes. So um, that's the way to, to professionally do it through Facebook. Now you're gonna pay for them, but um, it's a way to do it. Uh, post engagement, so that's a way for to just get people to engage with the post, and then you've got event responses, and we use we use all of these for our clients. Deeper down, there's A/B split tests, there's all kinds of other different things that you can kind of dig into there, but that's the engagement piece. Lead ads. This is one that we use. I've got a prior history in roofing and construction, so I like to use this. Uh, particular ad as an example. This was run up in Green River, Wyoming. Um, and it basically is a, a very clean and crisp ad that, that did get a lot of responses. So our picture obviously stops people in their tracks. So when you're running, one, one thing I would say when you walk away from this tonight, scroll through your Facebook feed for 20 minutes tonight on your, on your cell phone 
and just look at what types of ads are showing up. A lot of times you're just going to scroll right by all the junk. Our goal here was to stop people in their tracks. They knew their house, they knew they had a hailstorm. Now all of a sudden somebody's holding hail. Our goal is to stop them and get them to read this ad. So when we looked at interest before on that custom audience, we used homeowners. So we only wanted this ad to run to people that were homeowners in Green River, Wyoming. Anybody wonder where Green River is? It's like the far southwest corner of Wyoming. Never heard of it until this particular client, Roof Pros, went out to work the storm. I think they had 6,000 total people in the entire town. I think they ended up roofing like 500 roofs in that, in that town. And we probably got, I think we got 60 or 70 leads for them off of, off of this ad alone. So, very simple, right? Three lines, when you're running ads, I don't want you typing out a whole book. I know everybody wants to talk about their business and tell everybody everything. Facebook's gonna cut it off. So if you're going through your feed tonight, look at some of those where all of a sudden you've got the dot, 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 and you gotta continue to look, and now all of a sudden you've gotta read this book on this sponsored ad, and you're like, forget it, I'm done. Clean, crisp, highlight, learn more, free inspection, at least for this particular ad. They're clicking learn more. As soon as they click learn more in their feed, this is what comes up. It comes up on your Facebook page. As a customer, your information is pre-filled. When they hit submit, that information goes into Roof Pro's Facebook page as a lead. This is a very underutilized um, process within Facebook, mainly because a lot of companies go out and they, they, nope. uh, they, they go out, they set up these lead ads, they don't know what they're doing, they don't set up a custom audience, and they end up getting nothing out of it. So if you've got a process in place, they can work. So this is what would come up on my phone as a consumer when I click learn more, that information would come up, and if I hit submit, it's going to go to Roof Pro's page. Yes. And how easy is it to download that information from Facebook? It's pretty easy. Okay. Um, within within your <laughs> Facebook admin area, there's there's a tab. I'm trying to remember what tab it is, but when you're in business settings, there is an area that you would click on, and lead forms would be in there. You can download the email. Correct, you can download the information. And these are just three things that we use. There are other ways, other things that you can request. You can request work email. I suggest three as a maximum. Yeah. Again, you're, you're, you're basically getting people to give you information that you don't know, so you gotta be careful with. Yeah, I mean, this is similar to like collecting information with a constant contact. Absolutely, 100%. It's just Facebook's version of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we use we use an external system called Zapier to mm -hmm. automate that whole process. Okay. So with our clients, I've got I probably have leads that are so you don't have to coming in now. We, yeah, yeah, we're automatically setting that up. We go into Zapier, connect the ad account up, connect up the Facebook page. Whenever a lead comes in, it pushes it out. Mm -hmm. And for for us, I'm copy I copy myself on all those so I can kind of see what that looks like for our customers. And we have. At any given time, I'd say we have about five or six companies that are taking advantage of this process. It is a little pricey. It's, it's not cheap. You can get leads cheap depending on the type of business you run, but some of the roofing leads are 30, 40 bucks a pop. But these guys are used to paying, in some cases, $150 for a lead. That's, it's, not un, it's not uncommon for them to... To, for their cost of acquisition for a customer to be four to five hundred dollars, so it's it's a mindset for them, right? If they're paying fifty bucks a lead, it's for them it's nothing. They'll do it all day long because they're used to paying an amount. So for us, it's for me, it's a matter of determining what my customer is used to paying for a lead, and then figuring out if I can get this lead ad to convert at a lower cost or at that cost. Is that based on industry, or is that based on? It's kind of a multitude of things. Um, it's it, a lot of it is based on industry. Uh, a lot of it can be based on audience, your audience size. So, for example, I run I run a lead ad campaign right now for a hunting ranch in northern Wisconsin, about an hour west of Green Bay. Uh, we're running a lead campaign now that is seeing it, it's looking at an audience of probably a million people. 
So I have a broad enough audience that I'm getting those leads in at probably less than $10 each. And in some cases, depending on the audience, I'm getting leads in at $150 each. So again, I like to work with our customers to determine what are you used to paying? Can I match that or do better for you? Um, the immigration attorney, I think, is coming in at about 10 to $12 a lead, which is a good number for her. And we don't even count the phone calls. So I'm not, I'm not factoring in the 50 calls a month she's getting off of that same ad. So that's, that's lead ads. So let's look at a couple ads. The ad on the, on the left, balance claims. So that, you can see the date of that post is September 17th of 2016. That ad ran until February of 2018. We, did we never stopped the ad. Um, we got, I think, well you can see there's 79 shares, 504 likes, 26 comments. The number of times that people clicked, learned more, and submitted their information is probably upwards of about 400 or 500 people. So the only reason we stopped the ad and changed it was because they, they rebranded their company like six months beforehand and their logo changed and we just kind of said, kind of just keep this thing going because it's doing well. We've now done the rebrand and we're launching it again and it's still running and doing well, but um, this is the one that converted the, I think we're probably at a million dollars worth of business for them now off of this ad. And, and they're probably at about 23,000 in ad spend. Yes. So there used to be the rule, the 20% tax rule. Mm -hmm. that. Yep. Is that still on? It is still on and this does breach that 20% and we did get alerts from Facebook that your ad may not deliver to as many people because it's got more than 20%. I didn't care because it was converting. And as long as they didn't shut the ad off, it was working. We normally will go in with no text at all if we can on lead ads. Um, but in this case, it, it was funny. We, we had a, so they have a, a website company and a graphics design company. They're in Indianapolis and they're, Graphics company sent me that graphic and I kind of fought them on it. I'm like, listen guys, I really want to adhere to the 20% tax rule. They're like, just push it out. So that was one where I kind of had to take a gulp because it started working and even though Facebook was telling me each time I logged in, it gave me the little alert and said, your ad is more than 20% tax, it may reach less people. Our target audience for this ad is about 200,000 people. So we were able to push it and it went and it got momentum and it didn't hurt us, but it can hurt you. A few years ago, they used to review it uh, like uh, one- like With the one. grid? Yeah, and, and, and they wouldn't run it at all. Yeah. Yep. I, I think now they will push it out. Um, you can request a manual review, I think, in some cases, so sometimes there'll be a sign in the background that has graphics on it and it's not your text. So they will do some manual reviews. Um, I think it depends on maybe your ad account, what you've done before, how much you're spending. There's all kinds of stuff that probably would get it to the top of the review chain if you wanted to push it. But ideally zero text is the way that I like to run it. I like to have a really compelling image with no text mainly because if you go on your cell phone and where 90% of the ads are run now, your, any text on there is, is really hard to read. So uh, there's a purpose behind that rule. Uh, so the ad on the right is kind of a cool ad. It's, it's uh, Ray's Motorsports created a, something called an, an ECU unit, which people are converting regular dirt bikes into snow bikes. And the problem with bringing a dirt bike into a mountain at 10,000 feet is the air to fuel mixture becomes a problem. So they created an automated system that costs like two grand that built that is put onto a bike and it'll automatically fix that problem. So you never have to stop the bike. It just constantly calculates what that fuel to air mixture needs in order to ride your snow bike up in the mountain. So it's kind of a new hot thing. This ad was started, I think we ran it, yep, October of 2017. Um, 
It ran for four months. I think our ad spend was probably two to three grand in that time frame, and we were able to get, I think it was around $180,000 in sales based off of that one ad. So again, targeting was extremely important. All of the stuff that I talked about before with the video views and the retargeting, we had all these micro-targeting audiences set up that we were running this ad to that was a, we were able to convert. So just another example of an ad that, that converted really well for us. These are kind of some fun, well there's Kate. So there's Lincoln Goldfinch on the, on the left hand side. So that's kind of a, an example of you know, she did a Facebook, she does a Facebook Live every Friday, and at the time, her kid was, I think, having to go to sleep or was having trouble. She just did the Facebook Live with her child, and it was six or seven minutes long. I think we put $100 behind this. It ended up with 23,000 views, 195 likes, 194 shares, and 33 comments on $100 in ad spend. But what so, was her goal for this ad? Her goal is to just get people to watch the Facebook Live. So her Facebook Live is talking about immigration issues. I don't remember specifically what this one was, but it might have been around the time that the DACA stuff was being highlighted. So she was just going through some DACA stuff, talking about that, and again, it's, it resonated with her audience because we're segmenting that audience out and making sure that we're targeting her audience to maximize the amount of likes, comments, and shares. So. Um, her goal in this case, just maximize the amount of people that are viewing my content in order for me to take the 23,000 views and say, of the six minute video, I think it ended up being six minutes, I can now create a new audience on people that viewed it 75%. So the data is what's important, right? Now we can retarget the people that watch this video with another ad. So, and it could be a lead ad. So that was the goal there. Wagabag, for those of you who know Wagabag up in Round Rock, they've got about 17 locations up there. They've been around since 1964. Uh, kind of a really fun highlight uh, ad of you know us highlighting somebody that's been there for 30 years, doing a, a targeted ad to try to get people to uh, to get get employment there. So that's kind of an example of just kind of the the, the human side of, of being able to. to you know, target people with ads, have them understand and learn more about Wagabag. So um, that's kind of just a highlight of a pin post we did. For some reason, the data is not showing up, but it had a at the bottom. I don't know why it's not showing up, but it had hundreds of likes, comments, and shares on it. So it was, you know, congratulations, thank you very much for your, you know, time at Wagabag, it, and it and it resonated well for people to click on that career page. Almost ready for Q and A. Um, so that's ads review. Any any questions on ads review, ads, ad, making ads? Yes. When you say video, is that just live video or just explainer videos with text? So that video is a live video. The really good good question because I didn't touch on this. The really cool thing about live video is after you're done with a live video, you can run that live video as an ad. So that's how we got the likes, comments, and shares. When I said we spent about $100 promoting that, once that live video is done and it's posted to your Facebook page, you can go into Ads Manager, run an ad, and promote that live video to any of the audiences that you wanted to target. So if you had a customer list that you uploaded and you want all your customers to see that live video, you can run a live uh, an ad to say, to, to promote that live video, and it would run in the feed of the people that you're targeting based on the amount of dollars that you're spending. So that is, that's a really good question because we promote her live videos. So she does her live video on Friday. Some of them are five minutes. She's done some that are 30 minutes long. But we go in post live video. She'll send me an email, my live video is done for this week. I go into Ads Manager, I run an ad, I run an ad up against that video, and now Facebook will promote that live video in the feed of people that we're trying to target. Yes? Can you edit the video for the ad, or you have to run it the way it is? So, there is a way, I think, to add a website, but you can't go in, and I don't think you can change the text afterwards. 
Um, in fact, last week she forgot to put the tracking phone number in there, and I was like, oh, darn it, right? Because she's not going to go do another live video. Um, so it is important to make sure that whatever you're putting in the text before. Now, in this case, I don't know if I just cut off the screenshot, but normally she'll have some text in there at the top. Today we're talking about whatever she's talking about. If you have any questions, contact us at this phone number. So then the live video, then she'll start the live video, do the live video, finish it, it completes, post to her page. We go in, post live video, run it as an ad. Now it pushes out to more people that weren't in the position to be able to watch the video while it was running live. So. Blueprint, facebook.com forward slash blueprint. They have about 1,800 minutes, lots of minutes of classes um, that you can go out and dig into all the specific things that you want to learn about Facebook. It'll dive a lot deeper into all of the things that we talked about today. Um, it's basically Facebook's free training classes. Anybody can sign up for them. Anybody can go through them. It's a cool platform. Uh, you can get something called Blueprint Certified, which you have to take a outside test at like a Pearson Education Training Center. We just had an individual pass one of the Blueprint tests from No Time for Social. We're trying to get agency certified now in Blueprint, which again, when you're talking about 1,800 minutes of classes, it's a lot of information, a lot of data to absorb, but it is a resource you know, to, to use to grow your business, um, but it's a lot, of, a lot of effort that needs to be put into it. So, um, but that's a, a really good resource to go out and to learn uh, a lot more than what I was able to teach in the, in the one hour class today. Um, so next steps for really everybody in this room is, you know, sit down and develop a three to six month marketing plan for your business, uh, especially if you're going to begin to jump into Facebook. So using the things we've spoken about today, right, what can you do? Are you going to create target audiences? Are you going to do video? What are the things that you plan on doing in order to maximize your marketing if you plan on going down the road of utilizing Facebook. What does that budget look like? What does the content look like? What do the audiences look like? And that goes to number two, using the custom audience tools, going in, managing those custom audiences, building them over time, getting your creatives ready to go. Start with a 30 to 45 second video ad. So really cool way with maybe to be doing a live video, maybe do a pre-recorded video and run that ad as an ad afterwards. Use the retargeting options that we spoke about. So there's various ways to go in, utilize these retargeting options, go in and, and really maximize the audiences. And, and that's really kind of the, the biggest takeaway is you have so many different ways to set up these audiences, and if you use them and you use them properly, you can be very, very successful utilizing Facebook ads and maximizing your budget. Uh, and then once you get some of that done, expand into other types of ads and refine, refine, refine. You've got to look at the data and get a real good understanding of what's going on with your Facebook ads account in order to be successful. And there's some information on No Time for Social. Um, like us on Facebook. My email address is up there. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Our website's notimeforsocial.com. If a lot of this is overwhelming and you feel like you're ready to sit down and look at outsourcing your social media, we'd be happy to chat with you. I think Jessica left some cards on the table. Uh, you know, it, outsourcing is not for everybody, depending on the type of company that you run. Uh, how passionate you are about your company, uh, you know, it may be something that you just want to have that ownership of. We typically work with small to mid-size and the upper echelon of, of moving into not big business, but a lot of companies that hire us are at the point where they're saying to themselves, digital marketing is important to us. We've got a couple different options. One of them is we're going to hire somebody in-house 
So let's go put an ad out on Indeed and hire a digital marketer or hire somebody that is an expert in Facebook. That could be very pricey. You can hire somebody that's not an expert in Facebook that kind of has an idea about digital marketing, but then you've got to have somebody train them. So typically companies are scrambling when they hire us, like, I don't know what to do anymore. I know this is important. I'm tired of spending money on things that are not getting the return that we need. We need to hire you. So, um, and last but not least, I would say, if you guys are local around here, uh, I do a lot of work with the Round Rock Chamber. Tomorrow morning and every first Wednesday of the month, we have a really cool event called One Million Cups. Jeff and I are both on the One Million Cups kind of mini board, if you want to call it that. Uh, we both work closely with the One Million Cups community, and One Million Cups is a way for businesses to come in and present a product or an idea for six minutes, and then we have a room full of 50 to 70 business owners that become the mini advisory board for about 20 minutes, provide feedback on the product, what service, what they're doing with their business. It's kind of a neat thing. So you can look up One Million Cups Round Rock and you'll see some information out there. You can register on Eventbrite. It's free to go to. It's at the Hyatt right near Old Settlers and 35. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, Old Settlers and 35, right behind the Cracker Barrel, that, that area over there. Uh, it's a really cool event to come to. Uh, we, we have been packing out. The next two presenting companies are companies that uh, were recently presenting at Cedar Ridge High School in Round Rock. They have entrepreneurial classes now in Round Rock where these kids go in and start businesses, like real businesses with bank accounts, products, and two of the companies are gonna be presenting, and it's gonna be really fun. So I'm excited about doing that tomorrow. I usually MC the event myself and uh, a lady named Amanda from Dell. Uh, we kind of co-host it. Uh, and there's about six or seven of us on the team that, that manage it, and it's a really fun event. So uh, we have a couple minutes for additional questions. Anything else we can chat about? Yes, sir. Um, so you said about the live videos being able to be run as an ad in the ads manager. Yes. If you've already posted a video, like, I don't know how long ago, can, instead of boosting that post, can you go into ad manager? Yep. Okay. You can. There's several ways to do that. You can go in and um, there'll be a drop down within the ad section that you can find the post. Or if you have the post ID, it'll say you can enter the post ID. So there's a couple different ways within that ad to go in and select that particular post to, boot, to, to promote through Ads Manager. So it doesn't have to be a boost. You don't have to go onto your page, find it, and click boost. You could go into Ads Manager and, and promote it that way. <coughs> yeah. So you weren't able to touch on um, Instagram, but I have a question. Yes. Um, since you brought up the boosting in, um, in Facebook, so is promoting a post in Instagram, is the effectiveness the same as boosting a post? It, it's, it's not great compared to like an ad. So I would say if you boost a post, the it, it can run on Instagram. There's a couple things you'll want to do. One is you need to make sure that your Instagram account is directly connected to your Facebook page. Um, where that would happen would be in this section. So and and so I'm in the custom audience section of the Facebook audiences. When you go to run an ad, you will also get a very similar page in the ad set section. So there's campaign, ad set, and ad. If you go into Facebook as a, and you click on campaign, you're gonna name your campaign and you're gonna pick one of the things that I just showed with the engagement and all that. So let's say you pick video views. And the next step is to create your ad set. When you go into ad set, you're gonna get this. Part of the ad set in this process is going to be what platforms you want that ad to run on. Facebook will automatically select everything unless you do the little click drop down and look at what what you want to select. Instagram will always be selected unless the campaign won't let you select Instagram. So Facebook kind of force feeds you to use all of the available platforms depending on the campaign you select. So Instagram will usually always be selected where you will run into, not issues, but where Facebook will guide you is, 
let's say you have a five minute video. When you get to the promoting the ad and you select that, it's gonna tell you, we cannot run the ad on Instagram, we cannot run the ad on the interstitial, whatever that word is, in between on ESPN. So there's gonna be areas that you won't be able to run that ad, so they'll tell you. But it is best to run it through Ads Manager, and in this area when you're in the ad set is where you'll see Instagram. So I think videos need to be under 30 seconds for ads on Instagram. So, uh, is there a minimum number of interactions you need to have for a target? Like on that, the video you had, there was like 23,000 views. Mm -hmm. But is there a minimum number of interactions you need to have before you can retarget? Like I say, if you had 200, could you retarget just with 200 interactions? Um, I'm going to say it's probably 1,000 to start setting up your custom audience. Usually anything under 1,000, and Facebook is getting a little nervous that you know, you don't have enough to run the ad. And a lot of that's just based on if you if you decided to retarget 600 and you set a time frame of a week, they know out of those 600 people how many people are going to log in during that week, how many people, when they're going to log in. So they're going to tell you, oops, you don't have enough people to target. We run into that a lot. Like I'm running, I'm running some of these political ads now in Copeland in, well, Hutto's good, Taylor's good, but Copeland, Granger, Thrall, I mean, these, they basically have 1,200 people on Facebook. And so I have to run these ads over a 45-day period because if I don't and I restrict it, Facebook's gonna say, you don't have enough audience right now to run the ad. Okay. So they'll kind of guide you on that and tell you if you don't have enough. And then one other question. Uh, yeah, I'm in a healthcare profession, but it seems like more and more doctors are creating public figure pages. Mm -hmm. Does that run under the same thing as a business page, or how does that interaction happen? It would be run under a business page, I believe. We don't run any public figure pages now, but I do know that I believe you can run ads on a public figure page. I believe you can. So, so everything else would be like the same Yep, the same way. Yep. So, yes? So when you do build your custom audience, I've gone through this with Bruce, but so I kind of come up with my own suggestions and recommendations. That mm -hmm. One that you can upload your customer database. Yes. <clears throat> Once it's done, can you find more demographics about them? What I mean is, these are four things I knew, but now that I've uploaded Facebook as more, can I find out most of my customers are single or it's been a, or is it just what you know? I bet. <laughs> I bet if you upload a custom audience and you have 5,000 people, you could select your custom audience here. Those 5,000 people will show up. Mm -hmm. And then if you, collect, if you select men, it's going to pull out how many men are in that custom audience. So there is a way to kind of back into that by uploading your custom audience, having them set up, and then going into the saved audience area selecting that custom audience and then beginning to narrow down. So if you wanted to narrow down your custom audience from 5,000 people that you uploaded to 2,500 men, you can upload the custom audience, select men, and then there'll be an area down here where you can save and you can save it as another audience name. Just a follow up, do you, maybe I missed it, but if you have a 5,000, can Facebook now say, this is a like audience, not a 25? Yes. So we didn't touch on that, but there is a way to expand out that audience. Um, geographically, sometimes it's tough because the minimum they want is a million. The way to back out of that, if you are geographically set and you're not a national company, is you go in, so within the custom audience area, and I don't have a slide for this, but within the custom audience area, you can go in and create a lookalike audience. So you create that lookalike audience with a minimum and it's gonna be a minimum of a million. Then you take that lookalike audience, you pull it in here, right? See, lookalike audiences. Then you put in the, the demographic information. So you basically take your custom audience of 5,000, upload it, say Facebook, make a lookalike audience. They're gonna do it nationally. Then you go back into this area and you say, now that I have my lookalike audience of a million people, I wanna narrow that down to just this area. We do use that and that is a good thing. So, good question. It's that gets really, really complex. Now you're starting to get into some stuff that is complex, but it is certainly possible. Yes. From what I've noticed, um, 
custom audiences are individuals. Can we target businesses and pages? No. You can. <laughs> um, you can target under detail targeting. You can sometimes target entrepreneurs, business owners. The problem is kids will put CEO in as their their CEO themselves, right? So it gets a little difficult. We do run some ads that target. In fact, I think I run a one million cups ad right now, a video ad as part of our sponsorship for one million cups. And I think we do target like entrepreneurship, CEOs, but I think I raised the age up to like thirty five, so we're we're taking that you know, young demographic out to try to target people to get people to come to one million cups. So there's kind of some ways you can maybe tweak it, but it's you can't target a business page using Facebook. You can under interest, so here's something. You can target people that own a Facebook page. So under interests, and I can't remember exactly what you would type in, but I think you would look up Facebook page owner. If you typed in Facebook page owner, it's it's gonna it'll start suggesting different types of. So if you type Facebook page owner, that would be a way to target people that have ownership of a page, meaning they created a business page. So that's a way to do it. Yeah. Yes. YouTube doesn't like Facebook, right? No, you upload native video. Okay. Don't. Use YouTube. No, 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 like, okay. no, I would suggest not using it. Okay. Doesn't it, they'll you you can run ads using YouTube links, but I don't know if Facebook's saying let's charge them an extra ten cents per click because of them. Mm -hmm. Who knows what they're doing? So, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Hope you guys learned something today and keep in touch.